All right, Pastor Mark here with the, uh, the members of the greatest football team on the earth, uh, the Seattle Seahawks, and very, very glad to let you guys share a little bit about your background, your story, your history, what Jesus has done in your life. Uh, why don't we go uh, from my left to right, maybe take a minute, introduce yourself, who you are, what position you play, anything you want to let us know about yourself. My name is Russell Okung. I play left tackle um, from Houston, Texas. Uh, grew up uh, in a single parent household. My father passed away when I was a very uh, young child and um, I'm here and just, I'm happy with my walk and uh, who the, the man that God's shaping me to be. I know we'll jump into it a little bit later, but maybe with you, we'll get there a little quicker. So you grew up without a dad. Uh, were there any men in your life that were really involved that kind of helped fill that role to keep you from getting in a lot of trouble or what was that like? Uh, well, at first, no. No, I, I spent a lot of my, uh, my, my childhood with just me and my sister. My mom worked three jobs in trying to help raise us. But uh, eventually, there were a lot of men that came, came over and they really poured into my life. And uh, if, if it weren't for them, uh, I'd be lost. You know, I, I really wouldn't have the, the facilitation, the, the, the way they facilitated my life and, and helped me, gr uh, they groomed and grew me. Uh, yeah, they, they, they really sold into me. And uh, I'll forever remember that. Any, uh, any of those guys Christians? Oh, yeah. They're all believers. All believers? They're, they're all men of God, and uh, they really held me accountable. And uh, I can really see, people can really see uh, um, who they are in my life. You still in contact with some of those guys? Yeah, I speak to them uh, every week. Every really? week. Yeah, they call me and blow my phone up too, man. So, <laughs> yeah, any chance they get, man, they're, all, they're always uh, all, you know, over my head and uh, really uh, still pouring into me to this day. That's cool. So if you've got questions about your future... Maybe a gal you're interested in, hypothetically, there's a lady that you <laughs> like or something like that. Would these be the kind of guys you'd call, kind of like you would have called your dad if he was still around? Yeah, yeah. You know, that if I have a question, maybe scripture or about my faith or, you know, maybe a, a, a girl that I'm hoping to court. Uh, they're all great resources. Uh, and they, they all give biblical principles and uh, which I need to live by. That's cool, man. That's great. I'm Chris Marigos, Free Safety, and I'm from Racine, Wisconsin. Okay. And uh, tell us a little bit about your family, wife, kids, the whole. Absolutely. Um, I got a wife. We're going on four years of marriage. We met our freshman year in college. I was playing uh, football at Western Michigan University. And um, yeah, she just, she's been there my whole life for me. Uh, you know, ever since, ever since we've met, she's just been absolutely phenomenal. Uh, we have a little son, Micah. He's really uh, cute. You guys yeah. make cute people. You got to hey, make a lot more nah, people. She's the one that's making the cute babies, <laughs> believe me. Uh, and then we got little Mason. He's on the way. So, uh, so we're really excited about that. And um, yeah, God's been good, man. I grew up uh, in a, a Christian household. Um, both Your my brother's a pastor, My right? brother's a pastor, absolutely. My brother's a pastor at Harvest Bible Chapel in Chicago. Both of my parents are believers, so a uh, strong line of, uh, of followers of Christ. And what do you think that did for you growing up? setting you on a direction, keeping you from certain trouble? Are you one of those rebellious kids? That oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You were? Yeah, yeah oh, absolutely. Well, we, we knew absolutely. that with the free safety. We absolutely. knew that guy. <laughs> yeah, right, was, man, yeah. free spirit. I'm all yeah. over the place, man. Kamikaze. But, <laughs> um, yeah, absolutely. You know, it, it was good from the standpoint that I had a lot of biblical principles that kind of laid the foundation of my life. I didn't take to them, but I had a knowledge of those things. And, um, you know, the thing about me is, you know, growing up, you know, I did idolize myself and I did idolize sports. Um, because those are the things that made me feel great. And, um, you know, once I started realizing I got to high school, I wasn't the best player anymore. And, you know, I was trying to find satisfaction from so many things that weren't, you know, fulfilling me anymore. That's really when, uh, you know, the Lord was getting a hold of my life. And uh, that's really when he saved me when I was a sophomore in high school. So. And uh, how about your family? What do they think about what you're doing now? How's that work? Oh, man, it's a whirlwind. You know, I mean, big football fans. I've been playing football. My dad was a free safety in college uh, as well. And, um, you know, they just, you know, they really love what I do. But I think the most important thing that they really admire about my brother and I is just, you know, being able to walk with Christ and just have a platform to share, you know, my brother in ministry and, you know, obviously the ministry that we do on the team too as well. But, uh, you know, also the platform through sport that we have, you know, to just tell people about Jesus. Let me ask you this. So you grew up in a believing household with Christian parents. Uh, you became a Christian at a pretty young age. If you hadn't met Jesus, what do you think would be different in your life and your character? <sighs> And you could be honest. We'll, yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll edit it if we have to. It, you know, honestly, you know, it, it's tough to think about where I would be, you know, just because of, you know, understanding all the different distractions that come with, you know, what we do. I mean, if I was in this position, not being a believer, you know, having, 
you know, the pride, you know, that we would have, you know, just obtaining what we've been able to obtain, you know, having that viewpoint or, you know, the money that comes along with it or just, you know, just really the selfishness. I mean, probably would just be, you know, just trying to live the single thing and just, you know, do the NFL lifestyle. And, um, you know, I really, you know, as I think about that, I, I really am thankful that the Lord has gotten a hold of me and he was gracious enough to, you know, save me at the age that he did, especially when he did me. Cause at that point in my life, when I was 15, I was really at that tipping scale where, oh, yeah. you know, I was, I was spiraling downhill. I was starting to experiment with drugs and starting to do different things. And, um, you know, I was really getting to that point where things were really starting to go out of control. And so, um, God really brought me to his throne, you know, really graciously and really at the right time when I needed it, you know, in my life. And, um, you know, really was, it was really great. Uh, I'm Russell Wilson, quarterback. Right. <laughs> uh, right. I'm Clint. He had a rough Sunday. Yeah, yeah. A yeah. <laughs> little, little paler in person, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I'm Clint Gresham, long snapper for the Seahawks. So what does a long snapper do? Just, just, just for those who are on. Yeah, sure. Um, basically, I've, I've made a career of bending over. <laughs> <laughs> I, I throw things between my legs. Um, so how did you know? I mean, at what point in your life did you realize I'm really good at this? Like, like where was the day? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. What, yeah. How, how do you feel this call in your life? Like, I think I want to be a snapper. Because <laughs> yeah. I wasn't a good enough football player. <laughs> <laughs> I needed whatever I had to to get into college, and, and thankfully it worked out. That's great. That's yeah. great. That's great. Uh, but yeah, I you know I, I grew up going to church, and um, I had an understanding of God. I, uh, I believe that God loved me, but I thought that that love was conditional. And okay, so, explain that. Uh, I thought that God loved me as long as I was good. And it is, oh, well, then you're dead. It's over. <laughs> yeah. That's super discouraging. Yeah, I was yeah. constantly discouraged and always feeling like, uh, you know, I, I didn't measure up. Um, I would say that Jesus really didn't get a hold of my heart until, until I got into college. And it was when I was living in sin and was not interested in God. And God came and he showed me his kindness. How old were you at this time? I was 18. 18. So, okay. and, um, and it made me question a lot of things uh, about, you know, who God was. Because like I said, like I, I was in the middle of living in sin and was not really interested so in God. So what is that? Drugs, alcohol, girls? All of it. Long snapping, just all those. <laughs> <laughs> just a cornucopia of evil. It was just yeah. wicked. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and yeah, and so I, I think back on that moment, and I think that that was when I really started to question uh, who I thought that God was. And um, a couple years after that, I ended up doing a discipleship class at a church in Orange County, and it was super intense. Uh, it was a month long. And there was all these stipulations of the class, like you had to take uh, two hours worth of classwork every Sunday. You had to go to church every week. You had to take notes every it's a week. Playbook, man. Yeah, it was it yeah. was kind of amazing, and basically took out every type of worldly influence you could have, and just flooded you with the Word of God, and uh, it radically changed my life. And um, I came back from that experience in 2009, um, just believing that I could make a difference. And I think that's something that I always struggled with. Is uh, you know. I say a lot that, you know, God saved me from an expectation of a life of mediocrity and uh, just believing that, man, like God actually does want to do things in my life and God actually does want to, you know, reach the world around me. And uh, if I can just be a vessel for him and allow him to pour into me, he can pour into other people through me. And uh, last question. So what do you think you'd be doing today had you not met Jesus? Oh, man. And started walking with him? Yeah, I'd be living in sin and bound with all kinds of addiction and uh, looking for love in all the wrong places. Yeah, I'm Rocky Seto from Southern California. A little bit about myself. I've been married to my bride, Charlotte, for 10 years. We have four children, Kehlani, Mia, Troy, and Timothy. What are their ages? Eight, six, four, and two. So your wife is busy. We're rolling. We're rolling. Yeah. And yeah. As, you know, I'm sure Grace understands you're busy, I'm busy, and she holds it down. She's, she's amazing, amazing woman. And uh, how did you meet Jesus? When did you become a Christian? I became a believer at the University of Southern California, 1998, my senior year. Two guys who were witnessing to me, Rocky Brown, another Rocky, a, a walk-on wide receiver from Orange County, and then Mike Sylvester, like one of my mentors uh, who I talked to t today. And uh, uh, both guys, I love the, the, these brothers, and uh, they introduced me to the Lord, and then um, that was it. That's cool. So now, I mean, you're kind of in that position, almost kind of like a, a father figure. I don't want to make you older than you are. Um, but 
for the guys that are still playing, you're in a position of coach, and so you're worried about their health and their performance, but you also care about the whole person, not yeah. just yeah. Sunday and not just the season, but, you know. Yeah, and it fits in pretty well with how Coach Carroll thinks, too. You know, he's not the typical coach where we just coach X's and O's. We definitely try to coach the whole person. And, like, football people worship football. Okay, so whether you're a football coach or a football player, they want to be really good at football. Okay, so if you're in a certain business, they worship that business. Okay, so if I'm able to help somebody become as good as they can become as a coach or a football player, we're going to establish a pretty good relationship now. Okay, and when that happens, I, th I believe God opens an opportunity to speak into their lives and share Jesus ultimately. They'll know your character, so they'll, they'll have trust in you. But And then ultimately, you share the gospel. And... Um, so that if anyone were to ask me, hey, how do you incorporate faith and how do you evangelize or share the gospel in your workplace? That's exactly be awesome at what you're doing. Help the people around you be as, be as awesome as it can be. And then when you get the opportunity, share the gospel. Be very clear about it and, and uh, be, be always be looking for that opportunity. So when it happens, you nail it. So I'll give you an opportunity. Share yeah. the gospel. What's the gospel? Gospel means that Jesus saves. We all need Jesus. Without Jesus, we are damned. Like with do I ha understand my dire need for Jesus? And Jesus is everything. Ultimately, Coach Carroll asked a question to the team um, this past um, Saturday. Ultimately, the, he asked, okay, why do you guys compete so hard? People had various answers, and there were really good answers. But ultimately, I wrote down, he goes, in, in certain words, how would you describe it? Jesus owns me. So Jesus died for me. Jesus paid for the debt that I couldn't pay, which is eternal death. And then ultimately, he gives me everything I need. And it affects my marriage. It affects my, how I raise my children. It affects my coaching. And ultimately, just you're consumed by who Jesus is. And as soon as someone helped me understand that when you read the Bible, see Jesus in it, it was over, man. It was over from Old Testament to New Testament stuff. It's just awesome. So ultimately, like, uh, my favorite verse, I hope it's okay I share my favorite verse. No, no, no. I'm not sure. <laughs> I wanted you to, but Russell said no verses. <laughs> it was very, he was very That's clear about I, that. I need to drop a little verses here and there, so I'm going to go with it. it. It's First Corinthians 2, 2. Paul talks about, for I determined to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. Being so clear who we are, the essence of what we're about, I think guides us all, period. You know, so we're, we're not distracted, so... Ultimately, it's about being able to share Jesus and knowing that he owns me mm -hmm. and in a good way because he's the best king that I could ever hope to be under, you know, and um, yeah, so thanks for asking. Yeah, that's <laughs> great, man. Russell, thanks for joining us. And uh, man, what a, what a great opportunity God's given you uh, to do what you love and to do it well, to do it with a fan base that is glad to have you. So on behalf of the fan base, welcome. Um, yeah, thanks, thanks for having me. Yeah, man. And so maybe a little bit about your story. I'm sure people are familiar with your performance. How about your upbringing and some of your family and history? And whatever you want to share is fine. We'd love to hear it. Well, you know, I'm Russell Wilson. I was born in Richmond, Virginia. Actually, I was born in Cincinnati, Ohio, but I lived in Richmond my whole life, ever since like one or two. Um, you know, I, I met Jesus when I was about 14 years old. On the summertime, and and uh, that's so that's like when I that's when I was saved. Oh, I, I met him before. You know, I you know I, I got saved though when I was about 14 years old, and um, that's when my life started changing. I used to be a bad kid, you know, shockingly. What, what kind of bad kid? Like <laughs> no, is like long snapper bad kid or how yeah, bad? Like, like trash. I used to be terrible. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Okay. No, um, I, I just used to I just used to beat up people. I used to bite people. I used to do just bite stupid people. stuff. Yeah, I used to be Man, bad. Sounds I used like to a D line. I, I was a mean yeah. dude. Um, but, you know, I think that, um, yeah, so, I, you know, I, that's kind of when my life started changing. Yeah. You know, I wouldn't be where I am today without Jesus. You know, Jesus is, is my all. He's my everything. Um, I'm not perfect by any means. You know, I, I try to do the things the right way. I try to live righteous. Um, but I'm, I'm a constant, you know, work in progress. And we all are. You know, and no, nobody's perfect. And that's the amazing thing about Jesus is, uh, you know, he takes you for who you are. You know, and, and, and so, you know, for, for me, you know, it's just giving him all the glory. You know, I, to be the quarterback of the Seattle Seahawks and, and to play with these guys, it, it's a tremendous honor. You know, and... And so, you know, obviously I, I love Jesus for, for what he's done in my life and what he continues to do, um, despite, despite, despite my circumstances, despite what I do wrong or what I do right or whatever, he's still always going to love me. And that's the difference between Jesus and, and everybody else. You know, Jesus will always love you, always be there for you. So, How important is it for you to have someone bigger than you, somebody to look up to, somebody to worship, somebody to live for, somebody to, um, to not make it all about Russell? 
Well, uh, you know, we talk about playing for an audience of one. You know, the audience of one truly is, you know, playing for the Lord, playing for Jesus Christ. And, um, you know, every time I step out, people always ask me, Russell, do you ever get nervous for games or do you ever, like, worry or anything like that? No, not at all. You know, when I step out on the field, God's put me on that field for a reason in front of 80,000 people um, for a reason. Uh, and and I, I truly believe that through my play, hopefully, that I can change people's lives. That's great. Anything else you guys would want to add? Yeah, I, just, yeah. I just want to say one thing quick, too. You know, it's easy f for anybody to look at us and say, oh, these guys are in the NFL or they came from this or, or they've, you know, what, look what they can do with the platform that they have. But, I mean, when you really look at any one of us, I mean, look at Russell, 5'11 quarterback, you know, it wasn't supposed to be. Sure. Rocky, Rocky Seto, you know, I mean, Rocky Seto from Southern California, walk on at USC, who was, you know, the guy who just, you know, was trying to get on Coach Carroll's staff, or Clint Gresham was playing guard in high school, and now he's in the NFL in his fourth year. Russell Kuhn came from, you know, a home that, you know, was shattered, you know, through, you know, his, his father's passing and, and where he was. And for me, I was a walk on, and I didn't earn a scholarship until my fifth year in college, you know? It's like, but now we're on the Seattle Seahawks. And to see the platform that God's given us. And it's like, you know, you look at that and you say, man, we weren't the best of the best. We weren't the cream of the crop. We weren't the people that were supposed to make it. But you see what God can do in and through people that are willing just to be open to what God has uh, and to be faithful with the little things. And as you are, God continues to give you more. And um, it's really a testament to these guys on how faithful they are and what God's been able to give them, uh, you know, just through their faithfulness. So, you don't need to be, you know, the, the high profile person or the person with the biggest pedophile. You just need to be faithful. That's it. I just yeah. a chance to say something. Man, I, you can do whatever you want. Yeah. So that's all right. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. You know, I wanted a chance to say something. And uh, I've been reading a book lately. And uh, the first page of the book, man, and it was so profound. It said, uh, it's not about you. And after I read that, I just closed the book. I couldn't believe it because it's it was, uh, a concept that I just uh, I just couldn't believe. Because if I just looked back over my life and I just seen how self-sufficient I was, the, the background I grew up in, and the fact that I wasn't supposed to be here, most of the guys I grew up with are either dead in jail or they, most of them haven't made it. And that's the truth. And I'm just thinking, about, you know, how are these things happening? I needed to know when I was a young little boy that I was loved and that there was a father, a supreme, sovereign father who came, came to me and had been watching me every day of my life, every day of my life, that he saw this man I was going to be today. He knew way beforehand, way beforehand. The Bible tells us that all these days are numbered. He knows every single detail about us, even before we were in the womb. And he knew that beforehand. That is amazing to me. It blows my mind. It blows my mind that God, in all his love, just loves us just to love us. And all he wants to do is for us to love us back. That it wasn't about me, it wasn't about my heartache, it wasn't about my situations, my circumstances. That is truly about him. Anything else you guys yeah, would I'd like to see? One last thing is take this opportunity. It, Jesus makes sense, you know, and because literally Jesus is the greatest treasure in the universe. And it's, it's, it just makes sense. It's not like you give up your life and then you get something worse. You know, it's like Jesus is... Now you you give the that. worst and get the best. That's <laughs> no question. You know, he gave us everything. We had nothing. He gave us everything. So literally, it, it's just one plus one equals two. It's just that simple. You know, Jesus is better than anything that we could ever hope. Even better than a Super Bowl, better than an NFL career. Is the any NFL coach supposed to say that? That anything is better than the Super Bowl? Don't you? Jesus, yeah. <laughs> you, know, you know, I don't know if this is that out. You know, any, I think some of us here, all of us here would like to say it. You know, who knows what's going to happen. But if we ever to win the Super Bowl, to be able to tell everyone that, no, Jesus is still better. Because as, yeah. much as, as much as we worship this thing called a ring and championship, although we'd like to have one for sure, I, I just can't wait to tell people. If that happens, God willing, we'll be able to tell people, yeah, Jesus is way better still. Because you're going to wake up the next day, it's, things are going to be the same if you don't have Jesus. If you have Jesus, it's still going to be awesome win or lose. So. Thank you guys for taking the platform and opportunity and talk to guys about Jesus. And especially in a day when men tend not to go to church, uh, men tend not to be interested in Jesus, to have strong men, godly men, good men, who are uh, men who also love Jesus, but love Jesus like a son Loves a father is more the way you guys love God. You know, there's a, there's a masculine strength to it. I think it's super helpful, and it, it opens up a possibility for other guys to get to know who Jesus is and get to know him like you guys do. So thank you very, very much for your time. I appreciate it. Yeah.